everyone welcome back to my channel i know it's been a really long time since i have uploaded a video there's been so much going on in my life over the last few months my daughter has gotten married my daughter is expecting her first child yay i'm gonna be a grandmother and i'm so excited but it was time for me to get back to business and to get my business back on track instead of having it take the back burner so i am back with you guys today and we're gonna be doing a christmas plaid 20 ounce cup and i hope that you guys like it be sure to like the video and hit subscribe so that you'll be notified every time we upload a video and hopefully we will get back on track with our video uploads very soon Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoy it. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. All right, to get started, I'm going to use a 20-ounce skinny platter from Midlands Vinyl. I'll link them down below. I've also got a 20-ounce cup sanded and washed from Maker Flow Crafts. And I'm also going to be using some painter's tape and my Cricut paper cutter. Now, I'm just going to attach that platter to the bottom of my cup. And what this is going to do is um, it's like a template to allow you to get your straight lines with your painter's tape. And we're going to need both vertical and horizontal lines on the cup so that we can create that plaid look. I'm just going to try to get this on here straight. And of course, my straight never happens on the first go. So, of course, I mess with it two dozen times so that I can get that on there where I want it. Now, me being the person that I am, I do not want to go out and buy three quarter inch painters tape which is what I feel works best with these platters especially the smaller ones so I'm going to use what I have on hand and put that on my paper cutter at three quarters of an inch and trim it down because this painters tape is from Walmart and at my Walmart I can only find just shy of two inches wide and just shy of one inch wide so in order to get that three quarters inch, I'm just going to trim that down. And I know that seems kind of silly. I could just go out and buy the three quarters inch painter's tape, but I already have this on hand and I might as well use what I have and then I can purchase the correct size that I want. So that's why I'm trimming it down. You don't have to trim it down. You can use whatever you have on hand and not trim it at all. I just find that this works best for me. And all that you have to do is line it up on one of the inset notches on that platter and then just bring it straight down the cup. I tend to look from the top of the cup towards the bottom to make sure that I have it straight or as straight as I can get it. Um, at the end, you can always adjust once you remove the platter. If you feel like some of them are not quite straight enough, you can always adjust it. So I'm going to do a couple of these for you and show you how to do those. This platter is amazing. It works so well. They're so versatile. They sell platters for many different size cups. I have them for 20 ounce skinnies. I have them for the larger cups. There's some for the smaller cups, and they're just so versatile. You can even use some of them, even though they're for specific size cups, you can use them for different sizes. As long as they fit the dimension on the bottom of the cup, you can still use them. So you don't have to necessarily buy all the ones for all the different sizes. You can get a couple of them and then see which of your cups they fit. And then as you come across cups that they don't fit, you can purchase new ones so that you'll always have one that'll fit any style cup that you create. This is a very easy way to do a plaid. I've not done a full vinyl wrap plaid where you remove the single squares after you put the whole sheet on the cup. There, It's like cut into single squares. I've not done one of those yet, but if you guys would like to see a video on that, let me know and I'll do one of those excuse me, I'll do one of those for you. 
So I'm going to speed this up so that you're not watching all night long just putting this tape on the cup because we want to get to the good part and see the sparkly stuff. But I did want you guys to see it, so I'm just fast forwarding it a little bit here for you. And I tear off a little bit of the excess just so that I'm not tucking so much of it under. And I don't have to reach my hand all the way into the cup at the end when I want to remove those stripes. And like I said, you're just going to do these vertical stripes here from top to bottom. And you're lining those up. And I tend to do one on one side of the platter. And then the next one I put on the other side of the platter. That way all of the weight from the tape doesn't pull up one side of that platter as you're putting these uh, paint stripes on. Or these tape stripes on. I don't know where I got paint stripes. So we're going to do this last one here. And then I'll show you how to remove that platter from the bottom because we don't want that. It's just as a guide. So we're not going to leave that on. So we're going to put this last stripe on, this last piece of tape. And these will be all the vertical lines that we need. Now to remove the platter, I hold my hand up close to the bottom of the cup so that when I pull these little tabs off of the platter, it doesn't remove or adjust where I have those paint tape lines on the actual cup. So I'm just removing a small bit of it. And then once you get all of those tabs off, you can just pull that platter off the bottom of the cup. And then we're going to tuck each of those little tabs back onto the bottom. And in just a little bit, once we get the horizontal lines on, we're actually going to cut all these little tabs off. Because we're not really going to need those. They're just there as a guide. I mean you could leave them there if you wanted to. And you could create onto the bottom. Um, but I always cut and just do a solid color bottom. Now for the horizontal lines. We're going to do the exact same thing. I'm going because the, the vertical lines are three quarters of an inch you want your horizontal lines to be the exact same dimension so once again i'm going to pull off a piece of tape line that tape up on my paper cutter at three quarters of an inch and we're going to trim this piece of tape down to three quarters of an inch so that it matches all of the other lines that are already on the cup. This way you end up with squares for your plaid rather than rectangles. Now this first stripe that you put on horizontally is going to be extremely important to get straight because if you get this line off all the lines down through your cup are going to be off as well. So it's extremely important to get this line straight. And I try to line it up just under the tip, the like very tip rim of the cup so that I'm not, I don't have any overhang, if that makes sense. So you're just going to work your way all the way around. And you want to make sure that when you meet up, with the other end of your tape, I'm sorry about being off frame here, you want it to line up. That way you know you have it straight all the way across. And we're just going to do that all the way down through to the bottom of the cup until you can no longer add a full piece of tape. And you'll see what I'm talking about here in just a moment because there will be a small silver space left at the bottom where I don't have room to add a full piece of tape. And that's where we'll cut the tabs off to create the bottom. So see how I have that small rim of silver there at the bottom? That's because a full piece of tape wouldn't go there. It wouldn't fit. And rather than have an odd shaped square at the bottom. I'm just going to cut all of these little tabs off 
And the bottom of my cup will be a solid black. So it'll have a solid black base that won't have any of the other plaid colors on it. Just make sure that you use a really sharp craft knife or exacto knife and it'll cut through really well. Just be super, super careful that you don't let it slip. These exacto knives do like to slip when they're cutting over the stainless steel. So just be careful that you don't cut yourself. And then once we get these removed, then we're going to move on to the next step. And I always cap my X-Acto knife and put it over to the side so I don't accidentally stab or cut myself with it laying there on the table. Make sure that your painter's tape is smoothed down really well and that's so that your Mod Podge doesn't leak. Now, I'm going to create a unique little V-shape cutout on this particular cup. So now I'm just going to use painter's tape and put a little frame there for me to go by and my husband's playing with my new tabletop vacuum over here on the side it's a toy he has to play me in right so I'm just going to use a couple pieces of painter's tape these I did not cut down because they're just gonna lay out where I want that v shape to go and the reason I'm doing that is so that um I can outline the V-shape in a silver holographic glitter, and then we're going to put a water slide in the middle. So I'm just trying to figure out where I want, want this, and I'm going to trim off the tails of that tape. Just be careful that you're only cutting that top layer of tape. I'm going to trim the two tails off to make a point here. And then, of course, once I do that, I decide that I don't like where it's at, so I peel it all up and readjust it and in hindsight I should have figured out where my black squares for the plaid were going to be and adjusted the point of this v-shape to be in a different square at the end you'll see what I'm talking about but after I added the silver holographic vinyl tour onto the seam where the white v-shape is and the plaid is it kind of hides it so you don't really see it but I'll point it out to you when we get there where the tip of this V-shape is in the white and the V-shape is white. So it just kind of looks funny. So I should have put it elsewhere. Now I'm going to use some Mod Podge and tint it with acrylic paint to do my squares rather than use any spray adhesive or anything else. This just seems the easiest for me and it works the best. So I'm just tinting that Mod Podge with black first because you want to do any time possible you want to do your darker colors first. Now I'm counting up to the bottom to make sure I get my colors correct and I'm going to start at the very top and we're just going to peel off that first horizontal line of tape and we're going to paint the silver the exposed stainless steel with the black Mod Podge and we're gonna put the black glitter in that as well. And you can usually do two or three of these squares before applying the glitter. Just make sure that you don't put too much Mod Podge on, but you also don't wanna put too little because you wanna have a little bit of leeway time on putting the Mod Podge and adding your glitter so it doesn't dry too fast. So there's like a little sweet spot of how much Mod Podge you want to put on there because if you glob it on it's going to leak underneath that painter's tape and bleed into the other spots and you don't want that either. And then you don't want too much because it'll take too long to dry. Now I will go through and do all of the black spots first. And then I'll do a second coat on them. And then we're going to pull the next lines. And so here we're almost done. We're at the bottom of this first layer. And I'll do the second layer off video. That way you guys don't have to sit through and watch me glitter the same thing over and over again. 
but I want you guys to be able to understand exactly how to do it so that you can create one at home. Now, my customer sent me a picture and said I want one like this. I don't know who to give the original credit to, but this is not my original design. It was a picture sent to me by a customer asking me if I could create her something like this. I did tweak it a little bit just so that it was original to me, but um, I do want you guys to know that I do take... Uh, my customers will send me pictures and then I will recreate something and if I know who the original creator was I always give credit to that creator so just so you guys know this is not my original creation it was a picture sent to me that I created this off of so now we're going to pull those other lines the the last horizontal lines we'll pull the rest of those and clean off any of the excess black glitter so that it doesn't get in the way when we're doing the next color and I tend to pull a strip of painters tape dust it off pull the next strip dust it off that way all of that excess black glitter falls onto my paper and I can clean that up before I start the next color now that black does have two layers of black glitter on it because I use the Mod Podge, two layers works best. I know that sounds like a lot of work, but it really does pay off in the end. Now I'm going to tint this Mod Podge with white paint. White, Mod Podge is white, but it dries clear. So in order to have it be white, you have to tint it. And then I'm just going to use a tad bit of that black acrylic paint from when I did the black glitter to tint it so that it's more of a gray color and just use a tiny bit of black at a time because it will take over and it'll turn the color too dark so just do a little bit of it at a time until you get to the right color now we're going to use a square tipped paintbrush and paint in the silver exposed squares with the gray paint and I have used an equal mixture of the black glitter, which is Starry Night from Backcountry Glitter. I'll leave a link for that down below. And I also used the Crystal Gem from Backcountry Glitter, and I'll leave a link from that for that below as well. And I just took equal parts and mixed it together until I got the consistency of gray that I really liked. And we're gonna use that for the mixed color. We're going to go through and paint all of the exposed silver squares. This is the easy part because you're only having to paint what's exposed. Now comes the more difficult part. We're going to remove those vertical lines. And that's going to expose an entire strip down the cup. Now keep in mind, your mixed color goes beside of the solid color. So everywhere you have a solid black square, you're gonna put the mixed color for your plaid. What, whatever color plaid you're doing, whether it's red and black or white and black or orange and black, whatever colors you're using, your mixed colors go beside of the black or the one of the solid colors. You don't want two of your solid colors to be side by side. So whatever your mixed color is, is going to be beside one of your solid colors and that's why it's easiest to do your darkest solid color and then do your mixed color that way you don't get confused on what goes where plus it's a whole lot easier to clean up the glitter from darkest to lightest so we'll save the lightest color for last and now the the square tipped paintbrush makes this part super super easy because all you have to do is line up the square head of the paintbrush from one corner to the other on the previous squares that you glittered and that's how you can get such a good straight line they're not going to be exactly perfect but this works the best as far as i have found so far and we're going to just glitter where these mixed color glitter squares need to go and then i'll do the second layer for these squares off camera so that you guys don't have to watch that and then we will be back 
to do the solid white squares. And we will do the solid white squares before we do that V cutout. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and pull this V cut out tape so that we're not having to deal with that. Just go ahead and take all that tape off. We know that it's gonna be white even though we're gonna do the white squares first. Now see where this tip is? Now behind that tip is a white square. Now if I had moved that over so the tip was in a black square, it would have looked a lot better because the end of that tip would have been into like one of the gray squares. But here, because the tip goes into um, one of the other colors, the, the just above where the tip is, is a square and it's white as well. So it looks kind of funny. It looks like the tip has wings or something when you look at it. And you'll be able to see that better too in just a few moments. So this Mod Podge here is just tinted with white acrylic paint only. And we're going to paint all remaining squares with the white Mod Podge and put the white glitter on those. And you'll see here I'm just doing the squares. So I'm trying to keep all Mod Podge away from that little V-shaped cutout because I'm going to do that last. So we're just going to glitter the rest of those. And then here, I went ahead and did the first layer of glitter off camera. I did it backwards for you. And I'm putting the second layer here on. Now, I just poured Mod Podge onto that. And I'm going to spread that out with my brush so that it doesn't dry because it's such a large area. And then I will use my brush lightly over the whole thing and remove any excess Mod Podge because you don't want it all glopped on there. It will be a mess. But I wanted to make sure that I had enough on there so it didn't dry too fast on me so that I could go around and do really crisp lines around that V shape. And you'll be able to see here, it looks like the tip of that V shape has wings because it's ending in a white square. So next time I do one of these, I'll definitely end it in a different colored square so that it just looks more... Uh, I guess more uniform but in the end here where you see I added the silver I did that off camera I thought I was recording but I wasn't but I did do two layers of epoxy and in the first layer of epoxy after it had dried for about 30 minutes I just sprinkled some chunky holographic silver along that V shape and it kind of hid the bottom of that V shape where I told you it had wings. So it worked out perfectly. Um, but I would change that next time so it didn't land in that particular square. Now I printed this water slide on my laser printer. And even though I have a laser printer, I do seal my water slides because I just find that it, it just works better. So if you ever have, if you have a laser printer and you print water slides, and find that your paint might flake off some, just go ahead and start sealing them. Trust me, it'll be a life changer. Now, I just dampen the back of that water slide and slide it over onto the cup, and then use the little silicone brush here to squeegee any water out from under that um, water slide. And then I'm gonna use that microfiber towel to just kind of dry it off and pull any other water out from under it. And then I will seal this with CCDIY, I believe it's called Quick Coat. And it's just a sealer to help with anything that likes to lift. And I always seal my water slides so that whenever I'm applying the epoxy, it doesn't lift up. Now I'm going to do two more layers of epoxy. Here it is on my cup. I did add a few little dots and uh, lines with a Sharpie. Just my customer asked for cute little things there. I didn't see the point in printing them, so we just did it with a Sharpie at the end. And that's it. I will, before I put the final coat of epoxy on, sand my rim to just have a little bit of a rim showing and then put that final coat of epoxy on. And this is our final product. 
I hope you guys liked it and we'll see you again next time. Have a wonderful holiday season.